Hey everybody, this is Robert from Black Belt Gaming. I hope you're doing well. Sorry for the long time since my last video. We had COVID in the house and my son was sick. Amazingly, the rest of the family did not catch it and he's recovered pretty well. So um, fingers crossed, we're trying to keep our guard up day by day as I hope all of you are as well. Now, Rebirth. Uh, the DC deck building game is one of the most played games in my house. My, my wife and my son really enjoy it. It's, uh, it's a quick and easy game to play. One of the great things about it is you can just kind of play until you run out of time and then you can just stop wherever and count up the victory points and, and see who was doing the best. You don't necessarily have to play through and defeat all of those supervillains. So it's been a very flexible game, a very easy game to pick up and play. So what I was interested with this uh, DC Rebirth game is the cooperative mode. And it also had a solo mode. And I was interested in trying those out. I have played this game with my son and we played it straight by the book and what it does differently is it adds in a game board where you need to to move around so you can't just buy cards from a line you have to move to the space and buy the cards from that space and to move around you have these move cards and already you have three cards that are kind of choking up your hand and it's not really giving you any power. And power is the main currency in the game. So already by looking at this, uh, you are dropping some uh, in power, but if you remember the other card game had, I think it was vulnerability cards, which uh, just didn't give you anything. So maybe it's, it's kind of just replacing those vulnerability cards with run cards. So maybe it isn't so different, but as we experienced the game, we felt like in general, the amount of power you were generating was lower compared to the other game that came before. So that was an interesting observation, but um, the, the way you're supposed to play cooperatively is each time a supervillain comes out, you crank up this timer and uh, you have a certain amount of time to defeat five supervillains. What we enjoyed the game, we actually just barely won it our first game, but we did win. Um, the, th the only thing was, and my son did not complain, but I thought the game was way too long it just simply took a long time to get there and really what you were doing in the early game was just constantly buying cards to try to get as much power as you could and if you had any opportunity to get any of the the uh, starting cards out of your deck you would probably want to do so because it just doesn't do much for you so what i have set up here is a solo game um, I've covered up stages one and two. That's for my house rules. I have put uh, another piece on here where it says start adding an additional card. I'm going to be trying to play to three supervillains. So as soon as the first supervillain comes out, I'm going to jump up to three. And we're going to start adding an additional card each turn. And then when the next villain comes out, we go to four. And then when the last villain comes out, we come to five. And we have to defeat all three, not five, but all three supervillains before time runs out. The solo game is a little bit strange because you, you have another piece. I'm going to be playing the Flash. I heard he was good to play solo because you get some free movement. Um, your ally moves around and just kind of helps you keep some villains locked at a location so that they don't go where they want to go 
and start attacking you all of the time. So I'm interested to see how that's going to play out. Also in this game, due to its cooperative element, there are assist cards. And evidently in the solo game, you can play an assist card uh, on your card, but you can't use it that turn. Uh, you're going to have to wait until the next turn and then you get a free extra card to play. So it, I guess it kind of balances out. You kind of have one card down and then plus one card on the next turn. We'll just have to see how that goes, but hopefully it can help us out from time to time. Um, what else am I doing to speed it up? Well, I've, I've got the three super villains. They are the lower uh, powered ones, basically. Deathstroke at eight, Doomsday at eight, and Reverse Flash at nine. I've got the villains uh, just under half. So I think there were about 15 villains in the deck and I've got seven in here. And I'm gonna be putting those in. Also, the standard cards that come in the deck, I have removed all copies. So there were like two of this one and maybe there were two of that one. Uh, those are back in the box, so the deck is maybe about half as large, maybe a little smaller. And the first thing I'm going to do is try to speed the game along by giving myself, along with my uh, starter cards, five additional cards. And I'm going to add those in there and act as if I have already played for five rounds. I really don't know how this is going to work. This is an experiment. So that's 15 cards for me to start with. And I'll shuffle those up so that we don't have starter, starter, and then just table cards. I am now going to uh, make not five stacks, but four stacks of cards. And then let me come back. All right, so here we have our stacks, and one stack has about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine cards in it. Down here, it's probably eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight, eight, and nine, nine. I'm now going to take my uh, villains, and these are standard villains, uh, just the, the standard red card villains, and I'm going to put uh, two here and two here, two here, and one in the last stack. And then I'll take my super villains and shuffle them, and I'll put one, one, and one. And I'm going to shuffle each of these and stack this one on top, which doesn't have a super villain, and then super villain, super villain, super villain, like that. All right, with our new main deck prepared now, the supervillain should be down in the deck, somewhere down uh, just under the initial stack of about um, 10 cards, 11 cards or so. So let's start putting one card per location. This is between one and two, between two and three, three and four, four and five, and then we do have a villain coming in uh, between five and six. And she has a number here on her card. It says she's wanting to go to location two. So she's going to be trying to get to the bat cave to start some trouble. So we're going to start with Flash. His power in this version is at the start of your turn, you get two free move. And you can spend five move to draw a card. So maybe that's why he's pretty good for uh, solo play. I need to shuffle this up. I'll get my first hand of five. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four, five. We're starting our first turn. And our starting hand is all starter cards. So we're kind of starting weak on our first turn. 
we do have a movement card here for two. But when we begin the game, uh, we can choose where Flash is going to start. Let's see how much power we can generate. I think it's just four points at maximum, three points if we want to play the assist card on ourself to use later. Um, so this one costs two, lots of sixes and fives and a seven there, that's too expensive. We can get one of these basic cards, one of the purple cards, which are pretty helpful. Uh, for example, one of the bat cycles. Maybe we'll start over there and along with us uh, will be Batman as our ally. So we're going to start there and I think we're going to spend three power. So we'll pay three punches and we'll buy a bat cycle. This is going to go into our discard right away. And then that leaves us with the assist card. Uh, we could play it now, but why don't we put that on our hero card to use on our next turn. And then we have two free movement and then two more movement. So we could move up to four spaces if we wanted to. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to get next time, but just out of hope. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. We could get to the bat signal. Let's move over to the the police station. And we'll play this and we'll use Flash's free movement and that will end our first turn. So this is my discard pile over here turned sideways. And I'll draw my next hand of cards and we've got some of those that we got from the table. So Flash's helmet, Bolt of Zeus, and a bat computer. So that's going to be our hand. As we start the next turn, we're going to look here and see that now we're going to go through the full turn sequence. Uh, villains at their destination or sharing a space with the active player attack the active player. Uh, neither one of those is true for Poison Ivy, so she moves. She's going to move one space closest to where she wants to go. To go. So she's now... Uh, moved into Arkham Asylum. Then uh, we add the top card. We don't have a super villain out yet, so this hasn't moved. So we simply draw one new card. And sorry about that, I had the camera too low. Uh, Poison Ivy moved here to Arkham Asylum. Uh, we drew a card, Grappling Hook. It goes to the place with the lowest number of cards in the slot, and that's going to be where Poison Ivy was. So that goes there. And then we'll start our turn with the ability to buy cards and start doing things. Well, one of the things we can play right away is this Flash Helmet. Uh, this is an assist card, so we could play it on the flash card, but we have to use this one now. So this one is going to be played. It doesn't count against our hand size. So we just are imagining that another player on the board is playing this card to help us. Um, if we play this, we get three move and we can destroy a card in our hand. I think I'm going to play that for three move and I think I'm going to destroy this move card. I'm going to start trying to get rid of some of these weaker cards because Flash gets two move uh, anyway. And I don't know, would it be better to destroy the punch? Flash can always use those run points to uh, try to draw an extra card if he gets enough of them. Interesting point. I'm not really sure. Let me think about that. But that's uh, no power, 
just three move. So we definitely want to do that. Um, tell you what, we're going to move. We're going to put this card down and play it. And that's going to give us five move. And then we get to draw a card, uh, destroy a card in our hand. Um, let's, let's destroy the punch. We'll get rid of the punch. And then we're left with uh, two movement and one. And it says draw a card. So we're going to play this one. Uh, plus one power and draw a card. Uh, ongoing, you can discard this card from play. Uh, avoid an attack. So we can put this down. We'll put that shield down for the future. So one power, two, three, uh, four power. And we still have target mover can, target player can move one space. We could let Batman move. Um, maybe we're going to move him up here for one movement. And I can use my own movement to move Batman around, but I want him to intercept and stop Poison Ivy from getting to where she's going to go. So we spent five move. Flash still has his two move available. And we still have some power. Um, one, two, three. So at least three. So we can pick this up. We can get the bat signal. Let's do that. And do we want to move Flash? Maybe we'll move Flash uh, one space up to the grappling hook. And we'll say that's the end of the turn. We'll get one, two, three, four. We need another fifth card, so I'll shuffle. All right, there's my fifth. And this punch has been eliminated from my deck. We're starting a new turn. This is my new hand. And let's see what we've, we've got. The first thing Poison Ivy is going to move. She's going to move from Arkham Asylum to this space where Batman, I'm going to put Batman on top. So he is there with her. And then we draw a new card to come into the game and it goes where there are the fewest cards. Well, right now we have two cards there, one, 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 one. So it's going to go to the lowest number, and that is between space two and three. All right, we're starting our next turn. All right, we'll move the camera up a little bit. <clears throat> it's been months since I've made a video, so I'm a little out of practice. Let's, uh, let's start with Flash's free movement. I'm just going to sort of tap his card to indicate that we're using his movement of, th of two. So we'll move over here. And we're going to play this card. This card uh, confused me at first reading. Um, it says as the bat signal, you can put a hero from your discard pile on top of your deck. So if there's a blue card in your discard pile, a blue card like this says hero, you can put it on top of your deck. That makes sense. If there is a super villain in the lineup, put it into your hand instead. Well, it, it wasn't real clear about it, but you kind of need to pay attention to instead. But if you get hung up on it, it sounds like, why would I put it, the super villain, in my hand? That doesn't make sense. And what it's referring to is it being the hero, the hero. So it's going to help you a little more if there is a super villain on the board. If so, you get to take that villain from your discard pile and put it into your hand instead of on top of your deck. So the it is not referring to the super villain. So that's going to be one power. And we don't really have a discard pile right now. Two power. Lowest lane gives us three, four, five. 
five power. With that, we can pick up the blue beetle. Too bad we can't take out poison ivy, but we can get the blue beetle, which can help us out. That's going to go into our discard. These are still on the table, kind of you play them in sequence as you play them and resolve them. So I still have this move two left. Maybe I'll keep Batman where he is to mess with Poison Ivy, you know, keeping her locked down so she doesn't get here. But I may want to move Flash so that Flash doesn't get attacked. But I don't think I really need to worry about that uh, attack. It's, it's going to make you discard a superpower. And those are the orange cards. And I don't know if I have too many of those, but nevertheless, um, let's, let's move to, maybe we want to make sure we can get some more power cards. Why don't we move down one to the Batcave? And that will finish our turn. We'll draw our new hand. And we've got it now to move. So we might be able to pay that move for a draw card. So that's our new hand. We're starting our new turn. Um, as we would go around, Poison Ivy is there with Batman. So she's going to attack Batman. So what happens is uh, Batman is going to get a weakness card put on him. All right, so just over here, we've got Batman's card. We're going to put one weakness on him. If he gets three, he is uh, exhausted. And if we defeat a supervillain, then he can come back refreshed. So he is keeping Poison Ivy from moving. And that's it. We could now, if we didn't want to put that uh, weakness card on Batman, and I might do this, we could use Wonder Woman's shield. Uh, discard this or discard a card with a cost one or greater from your hand to avoid an attack. So we have some options there. Um, I think I'm going to keep that uh, defense card right now. So we're going to let Batman take his first uh, weakness card. Then uh, no super villains on the board, so it's time to draw. We, draw, we drew a regular villain. Uh, the lowest number with the fewest cards, so that's also up here and slot between number one and two. So now we have two there. Batman may start to get overwhelmed by locking down both of those villains. I think he would get... Um, actually, I don't think multiple attacks add multiple weaknesses to him. I think it's if he's attacked that turn, I think he gets a weakness card. Let me double check the wording on that. Yeah, here it is. It says uh, in the bold print, each time your ally is hit by one or more attacks, um, place a weakness card. So... He could be hit by five attacks, and he'd still only get one weakness card that turn. All right, I think I'm going to try to do something with Flash's ability. Two move cards plus his move is going to be six. Spending five, we can draw a card. Yeah, We'll put that into our hand. He's got one movement left. So how much power can we generate? Well, we can play the Bolt of Zeus and draw a card. Yeah. One power, two power, three power, four power. And I guess we'll go ahead and play this on Flash and get five power. We've got one move and five power. Flash is going to spin that movement to go up. Let me get the camera on here. We're going to go up. And we're going to hit uh, Giganta. And we don't really get anything from this. Actually, we do. There is a reward here. 
target player puts a basic card from their discard pile into their hand. Do I have one? I got this one. All right, so we knocked out Giganta. Uh, I think we've spent all of our power. Um, we can play this and put a hero from your discard pile on top of your deck. So I guess we can take Beetle. If we want to take Beetle, why don't we put him on top of our deck and see what he does in the next turn. So Beetle was in our discard. We'll put him right there. And I think that's going to end it. So let's see if I can angle this so I don't have to keep moving the camera around. Uh, one, two, three, four. We're going to need a fifth card. And still no super villains, and probably no super villains coming for a little while. It's trying to give us some breathing room to, to strengthen our, our decks before they show up, I think. And it did work. When I played with my son, that did work. It just took a while. So pretty good hand. We don't have any starters in our hand this turn. So let's see what we've got going on. Uh, Poison Ivy is there. And she's there with Flash, too. Interesting. So the precedence here, uh, or precedent, <laughs> precedent. The, the main point that I'm trying to make is um, not precedent, but priority. Which one of these is the priority? It's got to be the active player. So what exactly happens when you have yourself and your ally in the same space? I guess the attack would be a priority against the active player rather than the ally. So I think that attack is going to be coming against me which is to discard a superpower, and I don't have an orange card in my hand. So we're going to let that attack happen, and it's no big deal to flash. I don't think that Batman gets attacked. So uh, if according to the rules it attacks one person, and it attacks that one active player. So I think it would target the flash. All right, so with that resolved, without much effect, uh, we'll go on to drawing the new card to be placed. And we have the green arrow hero card, which I think is going to end up right here where Flash is. He's in a good, good position up there. And let's see what we've got uh, with our starting hand. We might be able to we might be able to take out Poison Ivy or maybe buy a, a better card on the table. Well, let's play this one, the Bat Computer, plus two power. For each time you were attacked this turn, draw a card. All right, so that's going to be three power. Um, three power. Four, five power. Five power. Six power. And that should be enough to take out Poison Ivy. And it says when you take her out, uh, target player puts a superpower from their discard pile into their hand. I don't have any superpowers in my discard pile. So let's see how much more power we can generate. We might be able to buy a second card. This is move. Um, says you can discard a, or destroy a card in your hand. I, I don't want to destroy my bat cycle. Plus two power. Ah, uh, there, there is a chance, it's rather small, 
but let's play this flash helmet and spend flashes to movement for a total of five which will allow us to draw a card. We're going to spend that movement to draw a card and we just get another move. So not really going to help me do what I wanted to do. How many spaces away is this water bubble? Too many. All right. So two move and two power is basically what we've got. I guess, uh, I guess I'm not going to do anything with that. I'll just sit tight where I am and go to the next turn. One, two, three, four, five. Draw our next five cards. Ooh, got a lot of starters this time. Um, no villains to worry about. So we just simply go to the draw a card and we get these Zodiac crystals. And they're going to go up here where our heroes are standing. And that costs five. Let's see how much power we can generate. We'll one, two, three, four, and draw a card if we play all this power. Uh, let's, let's play this one first and see what we get. We're gonna play this card, plus one power, and draw a card. More move. Well, let's, uh, let's throw down the move. That's going to be four, five, six. Let's spend five of it to draw a card. And we got Lois. So one move left, one power, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to put this assist on flash. With five power, uh, I can buy the Zodiac Crystals, which will help us to get the supervillains at a lower cost. That might really help out later. So I think I had one movement left over. Why don't we... I think the new card is going to be coming to that slot. I think I'm going to stay there for now. All right, we've got one, two, three, four, five. And our new hand, starter, starter, hero, hero, equipment. Not bad. We'll get one card to come out. Uh, Batmobile, it's going to go up here. Cost three to get that one. So it says we might want to destroy one of these cards. Let's use the flash helmet to get three move and destroy a card in our hand. Let's destroy this punch. And with uh, Three movement and flashes, two movement. We can draw a card. So we'll do that. And then we'll get some power. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. With seven power uh, from these cards, and we have to spin this, that's actually going to make it eight. Uh, Let's, let's buy both of these. Let's buy the green arrow and we'll buy the Batmobile. And I think that leaves us with like one power left over, but we can't do anything with that. So one, two, three, four, five. Starting the next turn, new card, Super Breath. And that's it. We can jump into things right away. We can play uh, the bat signal, <clears throat> take a hero, maybe we'll take a beetle here, and put him on top of our 
deck. So we'll do that. And then two power, that's going to be three, four, and draw a card. Five, six, seven power generated. Let's move flash two spaces. One, two, and spend seven to get uh, Superman. So that's going to be using our two move from here. We still have two move left over from our flash card. So with that two movement, I think I'm going to move back with Batman. No villains to worry about at the moment. Three, four, five. Five new cards. Pretty much all starters. Starting the next turn, we draw a card. It's going to come to uh, slot number one. And that's where all the action is happening. That costs six. Uh, super power plus two power costs four. We might be able to... Well, we might be able to get that. Let's see. Um, this is an assist card. Why don't we... Let's try something. Let's, let's keep this assist card on flash and we'll use it in a future turn, which is basically our next turn. Let's play the four move and the two move from flash to draw a card. And I don't have one, so I need to do a quick shuffle here and just draw one of these. Let's see what we've got. And more movement. Mmm, I was hoping for some power there, but we didn't get it. Destroy a card in your hand. Uh, let's destroy another punch. So we got one power this turn. See what I mean? Uh, it seems to be a lower powered game. Um, I still got one move left over and one power. It's kind of pointless to really go anywhere. Maybe I'll move Flash down to the Batcave and end, end the turn there. One, two, three, four, five. This is our new hand, and we're going to start a new turn and draw a card. And we've got our first supervillain. So this is going to move up to, I think it was level three is where I had it set. So... First, second, third. Yeah, that's right. We're going to jump up to level three, kind of speeding up the game. Uh, Doomsday appears, and he's going to go to the slot with the fewest cards and the lowest number. So it's right here, which is not good because he wants to get to the Batcave and start to uh, devastate the Batcave. So he immediately attacks. And he attacks each player, so he's attacking me. This is a solo game. And I think this is where we're going to use our defense card. Now, I have a choice of either using Wonder Woman Shield or Blue Beetle. It says for Blue Beetle, once per attack, you may reveal this to have target character within one range avoid the attack, and get plus one power. So once per attack, you may reveal this. To have target character, that can be myself. Avoid the attack and get plus one power. So let's just reveal Beetle. And we're going to dodge Doomsday's attack, and we're going to get one power from that. So that was avoided. And here we go. That's one power, two, three, four, five, and draw a card, six, seven, 
seven, eight, nine, and the zodiac crystals let us draw a card. Nine, 10, 11 power, and the supervillain is minus two. So six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. I think we're gonna have five left over. So with Flash's move, I think we can move down and take out Doomsday. And uh, you can remove all the damage from a target location, but he didn't do any yet. We avoided his attack. And then we still have enough to buy uh, Jessica Cruz. So we'll add her to our deck. I think we did that right. Um, let's go to the next turn. Five cards. And we got our Superman in our hand this time. So we're ready to start the new turn. The new turn begins. No villains on the board. And we get the Trident of Atlantis. So, um, as you're playing this uh, version with my house rules to speed it up, basically it put five cards in my hand and slimmed down the number of cards. So I, I was hoping there'd be a balance between how soon the villains came out, get them out faster, and then what kind of cards you had to be able to work with. And so I'm hoping the trade-off can work okay. I've only played the first scenario pack for this game, so I followed the setup rules and modified this. So I don't know how it's going to work for uh, like Mission 2, Mission 3, and, and how all of that. I don't even know what those say. I haven't even looked at them yet. So I think there are a total of eight different story missions that you can play through in each one. It's going to have different locations and different things going on. So I'll have to try those out. This is just an experiment to try to make the game a bit shorter. So we've defeated our first supervillain. And now we'll try to see if we can take out the other two before time runs out. So we've got down here are this ongoing card of Wonder Woman shield. We can discard that to uh, avoid an attack. I might go ahead and play uh, the Batmobile. Um, you can discard a card from your hand to get one move. And you can still keep the Batmobile on the table. Or you can discard this from play to avoid an attack. So we'll put that down. I like both of those. So that's not going to add to our power this turn. Um, what I'm trying to do is see if I can get over here and get the bat plane. That's one, two, three, four spaces away. So let's see if we can do it. We'll play the Superman card and it says move two and plus three power. With flashes two movement, that's going to be four. One, two, three, four. We are at the bat plane with three power. Three, four, five. And the bat signal is six. And we can put a hero from our discard pile on top of our deck. Um, why don't we put the blue beetle on our top of our deck? So I think that was six, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six power, we can buy the bat plane. That's a good one, plus three power. Green arrow is an assist card. I can play that on flash. I don't have to use it this turn. So I'll finish by putting that on flash and we'll get it for free next turn. So we finish up the turn with drawing two cards. We'll shuffle and reset. Three, four, five. So we're starting the new turn. Here's our hand. And we've got 
two cards coming to the table now. Hope I hope I haven't missed that yet. Card number one goes here. Card number two is a containment uh, field. And we'll put that there. No, that is not right. We need to put the jetpack here. And then that one goes there because we didn't have a card where Flash was. All right. All right, for four move, or why don't we use two move for Flash, one, two, two move from Flash's card, one, two. We're gonna play for free this uh, assist card, which is plus two power. So that's two, three, four, five, six, six power. We can buy uh, Batman. We'll get the Batman card, the hero card. And then we've got some movement. I'm gonna put this uh, assist card here so we can use it on a future turn. Leaves us with two movement remaining. Um, probably where I am standing is where the new card will be played. So I guess we'll stay there and we'll just finish the turn. One, two, three, four, five. And we get two cards coming out. We got Psycho Pirate. We've got a villain appearing. He will actually come into play where we are. And then a second card, the Flash Hero card. He's going to go down here between the City Hall and the Daily Planet. So Psycho Pirate I'm not even sure is that is that like a generic name for a villain or is that an actual villain's name? I don't know. Let's see what we can do. This uh, Superman card is kind of neat. It says you get move two plus three power villains in your current space and villains in spaces you move into move with you until you stop moving. So basically, Superman is grabbing them by the scruff of the neck and pulling them along with you. So let's take the Psycho Pirate on a ride. But I'm not sure if I'm going to move just yet. Let me think. I've got plus three power. I don't. I might be able to just take him out. I think I can. Yeah, let's go ahead and, and crank this up. We're going to play this one. Uh, we need to play this one or we lose it to draw a card. So we draw a card. We've got another move card. We play Jessica Cruz and it says we draw two cards and then discard a card. Maybe I will discard a. Maybe I'll discard a move. Um, we can play the Flash's helmet, get three movement, and destroy a card. I think I'm going to destroy a punch. Spending Flash's five. I'm sorry, spending five movement. 3 plus 2 from Flash is 5. We'll draw a card. We'll get another punch. So 3 power. Four power. And we can put a hero on top of our deck. Uh, maybe we'll go with the blue beetle again. So that's 4 power. Five power. Five power, we can defeat the Psycho Pirate. And it says as a reward, each player reveals the top card of their deck. You may 
discard any number of cards revealed this way. Now, well, we know that's the blue beetle and we want to keep him. So I think what we want to do now is we're going to have these two cards. Let's go ahead and play these for five power and spend four of those five power to get this super breath. So that was a pretty effective turn. Five cards exactly. Starting up the next turn, two cards coming out. Super breath. Really, I have a copy. Uh, I thought I had removed all copies from the game. That's interesting. So it's not a big deal. Uh, most of the cards have a, a second copy of them. So I shouldn't have had two of these. So I'm going to, I think, just discard this. And uh, we drew Super Suit instead. And then the second card coming out is Super Strength. This is finally a plus four power card. These are really rare in the game. But yes, a second card also is going to go there. So as we start our new turn, uh, do we have enough to get either one of those? Both of those are good cards. Let's see. One, two... We'll start with the Bolt of Zeus. We'll play this and draw a card, but we don't have a card available. So a quick shuffle and draw a card. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven. Seven power. We can get this uh, super strength card. Well, then I think we're going to put a green arrow on our hero card and save him for next turn. Give us a plus two power boost. So that will end that turn. Five cards go down. Uh, card number one, Flurry of Fists. Card number two is just a regular villain, uh, Bane. It's going to go with the lowest number of cards. That's over here. He's trying to get to Arkham Asylum. Space one. So he's going to go right there with the jetpack. All right. So we need to start moving around. Ooh, we've got... Looks like we've got quite a bit of move. Wonder if we would have enough to take out Bane. You know, wow, I have three moves. I, I'm going to be able to run circles around the board. So three movement cards or three run cards. Uh, let's start with Flash's movement. We're going to spend two. And then we'll spend another two. And we'll get here to Bane. Then we're going to play Green Arrow for two power. Lois Lane for two power. And the Bat Computer for two power. That's six. That's enough to take out Bane. And it says target player puts a hero from their discard pile into their hand. We got the Beetle. He can go back into our hand. So we've spent all of our power, and we have four movement. Well, we can spend um, two power from the Blue Beetle and pick up this uh, jetpack. And then we're left. But I think I'm going to stay there because I know that new cards are going to be coming to that slot. So let's finish that turn. And this is our new hand for the turn. And let's see what we get. Card number one, uh, holographic computing. 
Card number two is telepathy. All right. Telepathy is an assist card. Put a card from your discard pile on top of your deck. Uh, the good thing about the holographic computing is it lets you buy equipment from anywhere on the board, so you don't have to be at that space. Let's start with our good old flash helmet. This is really good because it allows you to destroy a card and you want to get rid of these starter cards. So we're going to play that and again destroy a punch. That, that gives us a little bit of power but not as good as these other cards do. So that gives us three movement. What's the best card on the board? A flash here? Mm. Let's uh, let's see. I, it's going to cost six. I don't know if I can do that. Let's play Jessica Cruz. We're going to draw two cards, and then we need to discard a card. I guess I'll discard the bat signal. So how many power? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We could get seven power, and we've got move three. One, two. So we'll go to the flash. Uh, we'll pay this power and remembering that we can put our character on any space on the board thanks to the, uh, the bat plane. We're going to buy the flash and then we can go anywhere we want to. And I think we may have one power left over. Probably the next card will fall into this slot, so I'll just stay here. One, two and then we'll shuffle and reset. All right, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Two cards coming out. Aquaman is gonna come where we are. And then one more card, uh, Sonic Cannon goes up here with the grappling hook. So another thing that was very difficult on the threat track were spaces that made all villains, whether they are regular villain or a super villain, it made them one point more expensive to defeat. And that was really tough because some of these villains can get up and cost as much as 11 power. I think Sinestro's up there like that. And then I think there's like another step on there that increases it another one. So like he would cost like 13 to beat. So if this is too easy, there are definitely some ways to modify that, such as um, putting on the, the little tile that says villains cost an additional um, point to defeat. You could choose higher level villains. Uh, I was choosing the lower level ones just because uh, of how hard the game can be. But right now I'm kind of rolling over these villains without much trouble. So I may have, maybe have made it a little too easy. Um, let's, uh, let's continue. Probably another super villain is on his way. We'll just start with the Jessica Cruz. You draw two cards and then you discard one. And I've got all good cards here. I need to discard one. There's not a super villain on the board, but I might keep that assist card for later. You never know when one's gonna pop up. So why don't we discard the bat signal and we'll keep these others. And then on my turn, I'll put this assist card on flash. And this is what I have left. So what are some of the best cards on the board? I think super suit is good. Flurry of fists. Flurry of fists might have been good, but I've been burning starter cards. And it says when you play Flurry of Fist, which is up here, 
put all starter cards from your discard pile into your hand. I don't, I don't know if that's going to be the best thing for me. So probably the super suit or maybe this uh, holographic computing. So we can get uh, three, four, five, six, seven, <laughs> eight, nine, ten power this turn. Ten power, and we'll have four move. And then we can even put our our token on any space on the board. It will be quite powerful this turn. Well, uh, let's let's pay. Four power. We'll pay these two for four power. And we'll buy. Oh, wait, we're down here. I'm not where I thought I was. We'll move two points with flash. And we'll move up here. And we'll pay four and get this. And then we'll. Play the black bat plane. Put your character on any space and get three power. And then we'll play a Superman to get another three power. That's enough to buy the super suit. And I know we have some movement left, but I think I'm just going to hang out there. Five new cards. Uh, card number one, Cheetah's on the board. Coming right where we are. So she's trying to get to location three, the daily planet. Card number two is heat vision. Here's another one that allows you to destroy a card in your discard pile. I think destroying cards really is going to help with this game. Uh, There are some enemies that, like the Scarecrow, I think Bizarro and some others that start filling your hands with these um, weakness cards. That definitely makes it tougher. Definitely. So um, the game could be a lot harder depending upon which villains are in the deck. So in the standard game, everybody's in the, the deck. So this is on the kind of the easiest end, I think, with my, my home version. My solo rules here. So, yeah, already with the way I've been thinning out the, the starter cards, two, four, six, eight, essentially ten, uh, we've definitely got enough to take out uh, Cheetah here. We need to play this. Uh, it says draw a card. I, I'm, I wonder if I needed to play that last turn. Let's go ahead and play it now. Draw a card. Ooh! Plus four power and additional plus one for each villain in your space. Well, let's. we got to play it. So four cheetahs in our space. This card by itself is five. Wow. Five... Six, seven. That's enough to defeat Cheetah and give us one power left over. Target player gains a card with a cost of four or less from their space and puts it in their hand. Well, we don't have one in our space that's four or less. So we've got one power left over. And... Flash has two move. This was one I had a question about. Power is equal to your current move this turn. I'm wondering if you can play this like right now. I haven't moved yet. And then get the power 
from the unused move points and then spin the move points to move does the power go down the first time I played with my son we played it that way so like let's say we had two move and we played this card and it was worth two power because this card as flash says plus power equal to your current move so let's say it's two but then if you move a space does this cards drop down to only a power of one because your current move is now one uh, we weren't sure about that uh, let me know in the comments if uh, if you how you interpret that or maybe I can search around online and find an answer but if you know please let me know I'm, I am not sure so where was I we spent uh, one two three four five six seven so we had one power left over and we haven't moved yet I don't think I want that flurry of fists heat vision might be good but we need to move over there to get there and I don't have enough movement to get there um, how much power are we going to have left over at least well let's put uh, the green arrows assist card we'll save it I don't think we're going to need a ton of power this turn um, we've got one power left over in our pool <sighs> plus power equal to your current move so let me just see how if I played it this way. If I played that now, my move would be two. So I would have a total of three power now, but supposedly still two movement. So we could move down or move over here uh, for one and then two. And that's a total of three power, four, five, six, seven, seven power. And we could spend six of it here and buy these two cards. Uh, could it be done that way? Because I, I understand the sequence of playing cards is very important and you resolve them one at a time. So maybe you need to play this card early in the turn and t so that you haven't used your used your move yet I don't know let, let me know what you think about that I hope that's making sense we're starting up the next turn two cards coming out shields up and super villain number two coming into play um, We could uh, crank up the difficulty a little bit if we want to. I think there's one of these things in here that um, villains cost one more to defeat. Why don't we just pop that one right here at level four like that. So level four, uh, we're just going to say all villains are one step up since I'm kind of walking through these villains here. And where would it go? It would go in slot number one, I think. So he goes up there and he makes an attack. Destroy a basic card in your hand or discard pile. That's one of the purple cards. We don't have to do this because we have some defense cards. We have the shield and the Batmobile. Um, why don't we... Uh, 
let's discard the shield and we, we blocked Deathstroke's attack this turn. All right. Um, I don't think, no, Batman doesn't get attacked by Deathstroke. It doesn't work that way. So Batman as an ally is safe. If it was, if it was another player, another player would get attacked by Deathstroke being a supervillain and making his appearance. So let's see if we can go get him. He's two spaces away, and he's going to cost eight plus one is nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hmm. Well, let's see. Um, let's play this one. This is a plus one power and draw a card to move. Plus one power and draw a card. We can spend five movement, and I'll play both of these. Three movement plus two movement. It says I can destroy a card in my hand. Um, let's... Let's destroy the punch. And it says for five movement, we can draw a card. <laughs> Another move. I wonder if I should start destroying some of these moves. I'm not sure. Flash just likes them. It lets you draw a card. Um, so we spent five to draw a card. We still have Flash's two movement. Deathstroke is trying to get to the city hall. But Batman is there to, to stop him, so that's good. Um, so how much power can we generate? Three only? Well, we got this assist card we need to use. One, two, three, four, five. We can spend five. Let's spend five where we are and pick up the shields up. And then uh, we'll spend two movement one two and I think we'll stop at that space I'd like to be able to get that heat vision card next turn so two cards I need to shuffle up and reset one two three four five five cards and this is our hand. So as we start this turn, he will not move. He's going to attack Batman. And Batman takes a weakness card. So Batman gets another one on him. Holding Deathstroke, or just keeping Deathstroke busy. Um... Let's go ahead and play this one, the Jessica Cruz card, uh, draw two and then discard one. Uh, why don't we, let's discard the run because we've got a bat plane and a jet pack. Can we get enough power to take out Deathstroke? That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think we can. So let's try the, the jet pack. That's going to be put your character on any space. You may place this card in your new space if you do plus two power. So we're going to drop off the jet pack and get two power for that. So that's two power, three, four, five, draw a card. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's enough to defeat a, a nine cost death stroke. As a reward, target player gains a basic card from the destroyed pile and puts it into their hand. I didn't destroy any, so that won't work. So we took out death stroke and we still have 
some movement left and some power. Um, put your character on any space. And we'll have three power left over. This is an assist card. Let's save it. Let's just save it. We'll put it there. And I think that will end our turn. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see what we've got coming now. Simon Baz. I don't think there's any villains. No. Uh, he goes here. And the last supervillain makes his appearance. We've got three turns to beat him. And he will go. He's going to go where Simon Baz is. Uh, when he makes his attack, we have to discard a card. I think I'm going to discard the Batmobile to avoid the attack. All right, this is it. He costs 9 plus 1 is 10. We need to defeat him with a power of 10. Surely we can do it. We're looking pretty good here. Let's just boldly move over there without counting and see what we can do. He's trying to get to location four. Well, we can, we can do a neat thing here with the grappling hook. We'll throw this down, draw a card, and a villain with a range of two to your space. One, two, we'll go whack, and we'll draw him over here to us where Batman and the Flash are going to gang up on this reverse Flash. So uh, let's play Super Strength for four plus one for each villain. So that's going to be a five power. So five power. We're halfway there. Um, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and the Zodiac Crystals, you pay two less, so he only costs nine. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, that's enough already before we even played the Flash card. We're able to defeat the Reverse Flash. And that uh, wins the game. So I don't know exactly how long that took me. I did a lot of talking and explaining and such. So probably faster. But uh, let's take a final look. Well, that was the, uh, the solo game. I think the modifications I, I did made it easier and uh, faster. And I think, I don't know, I, I still kind of would want it to be even faster than it was. But here are some of the other villains you have, getting you, giving you a weakness card, making you discard equipment. Um, you have to discard a move card, discard a random card against the Joker, gain a weakness. The, re the reward is gain a weakness as well. Um, put zero cost card, gain a weakness. So there are some pretty tough villains that I, I took out uh, because of the difficulty of the game. So if I want to challenge myself better, I'll put some of these guys in and uh, swap them out with the, with the others. So other super villains. Uh, let me see if I can get some of those. Here are the other super villains. We see Sinestro's quite difficult at 11. General Zod, 11. Amazo is 10. I forgot who Amazo was. I thought he was a robot. Um, Despero, 9. Lex Luthor, 10. So these are definitely the harder ones here. So if I were to choose three, uh, I could definitely crank up the difficulty. And 
um, the ongoing effect of villains costing one more can crank that up one if not two points depending upon some of the the tiles I'm aware of that you can add onto the board or what the scenario may have you do so there's definitely ways to make it harder my goal was to have it be shorter so here are all the cards I took out and uh, these are copies. These are the second card. You know, you're probably recognizing most of these already uh, of other cards in the deck. So I just thought that could immediately make the villains come out faster. And if the villains come out faster, if you're not prepared enough, then you're way overwhelmed. So that's why I started with an extra five cards in my hand. I did that, um, I actually filmed this a couple of times before and it was just way, it wasn't working right. I think the first time I did something and it was too hard. And then the next time I gave myself new cards but I discarded starter cards. I kind of burned starter cards and started with a deck of five starters and five good cards, and that was just too efficient. Um, that was too powerful from the get-go, so I was just breezing through the game. So just adding five new cards and starting with 15 uh, seemed to be a little bit better balanced. It's kind of like I played five rounds without really having any uh, villains to work with, and that's something that can happen. Uh, the villains may or may not come out really early. So let me know what your thoughts are. Maybe you might have a good idea for how to speed things up, but that's what I'm experimenting with. And uh, even just ignoring the, uh, the house rules, this threat tracker is how you play it uh, cooperatively. So you need to work together in the normal rules to beat five uh, villains before time runs out so that's the first round everybody goes it counts down again everybody goes and if he's not defeated by the end of this one uh, and it's time to move it over then you've lost the game so that's it uh, DC deck building game rebirth with kind of an experimental play using home rules thanks Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to all the rambling. And I'll catch you later.